your financial goals. You want more money? Turn what you know into dough. Start hanging out with the people who have it. You create wealth on your own terms. It is not only your rights, but your duty to build wealth. You are fiscally fabulous. Listening to Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, a podcast that aims to provide you with the tools, guidance, and encouragement you need to build your wealth, enjoy your wealth, and leave a lasting legacy. Dr. Martin is an accomplished attorney, speaker, business consultant, and real estate strategist, an all around self made success who provides highly sought after expert consulting in the creation, growth, and maintenance of generational wealth. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, my name is Chrissy Bartels, and you're listening to Fiscally Fabulous. Imagine. There's no rush to get up in the morning every day, to dress in a flash, grab a quick breakfast, and dash out the door. No. For you, getting ready for the day means going at a pace that suits you. You don't need to worry about getting stuck in that busy morning rush hour traffic. And that boss who's always breathing down your neck? In this world, that boss doesn't exist. In fact, you may not even have to leave the house. How is this possible? Because you are the boss. You work for yourself as a small business owner. Are you wondering if you should be starting your own small business? It's the dream for many working people to shed those constrictive chains of your employer and be in complete control of your career. And it certainly sounds appealing. I mean, after all, no one enjoys the anxieties and pressures that come from having to answer to a bad manager who is standing over your shoulder, constantly berating you. Most of us have had at least one boss like that, and it is definitely not pleasant to say the least. Sure, some of us may love our jobs and may have no need to leave our careers and branch out on our own, But for those of you who feel stuck in a rut, who may have thoughts of one day becoming your own boss, we'll address five things in this episode that you should know when starting your own small business. For the traditional would-be business owner, The idea of starting a business in the real world usually involves opening a brick-and-mortar store where you can sell your product or service to your local community. And this approach may still work for many of you, and it may be a better choice for you. But it does come with some complications. Namely, the cost of starting that real-world business can be high. The type of product or service you intend to sell can have a huge impact on the size of the space you will need. And the bigger the space, the bigger the business loan you will need to obtain that space. Since most new businesses often fail within the first two years, it's important you consider the risks involved before signing the lease for your new office space. If your business goes under, will you still be able to make those loan payments on time? And remember, this is only one expense of several you would be having to contend with as an owner of a brick-and-mortar business. Some of you might be listening to this and thinking with some despair. Hey, I haven't thought of it like this before. And in that moment, maybe your dream to start your own business may suddenly seem that much more unattainable. But hold on. Not every successful business needs a designated brick-and-mortar location. If you're someone who has aspirations of creating a business, but you lack the funds to make it happen in the traditional sense, then let me ask you this. Have you considered starting your business online? Starting an online business, if done right, can be just as successful as a traditional business and it offers a number of benefits. Again, these are five things you should know when starting your own small business. 1. 
it doesn't take a lot of money to get started. You can develop a serious online presence for very little money, as monthly management costs are negligible. As a matter of fact, you can easily get started for a couple of hundred dollars in many cases and under $1,000 in almost every instance. Some potential business owners looking to set up shop online begin by joining one of the many freelance sites out there like Fiverr, Upwork, and Guru.com, to name a few. Usually, sites like these are free to join, meaning there's no upfront cost to you. Sure, the work you might initially have to take on will involve rather paltry pay, but over time, you can build up a steady client base, increase your rates for the service you provide, and eventually transition away from these freelancer sites and secure work from new clients and customers on your own. For many, this can be a good place to start, as it allows you to get your feet wet before fully committing to running your own business. Not interested in joining one of these sites, but at the same time lacking the capital to start a traditional business? Then you'll want to consider products and services you can provide that require little to no startup costs little to no inventory, and the only tool you'll likely need is a computer. If that sounds more like you, then let's think about some of the businesses you could start online with little to no money. For instance, if you're passionate about a certain topic, perhaps you could start your own blog. If you market it properly, updating it with new content regularly and consistently, your audience will eventually grow, which can attract advertisers. When that happens, every time a visitor to your blog site clicks on one of these ads, you make a few cents more. Sure, it's a small amount, but it can definitely add up over time and be used to supplement your income on the side while you work toward growing your business. Not into the whole blogging thing? Well, what about video? If you're comfortable on camera and have something important to say, then you might find it lucrative to start your own YouTube channel, which, like blogging, once it begins to attract an audience, can begin to generate ad revenue for you. And again, the best part is these days, to accomplish this, all you need is a computer, tablet, or smartphone. This can be a chance for you to showcase your own product or service more directly, offer your wisdom and experience on common issues, or begin a video podcast about something you truly care about. Video is among the hottest trends at the moment, and up to 1 billion viewers watch videos every day on sites like YouTube alone. That's an incredibly huge market just waiting to be tapped into. Not excited about being on camera? Looking for something perhaps a little more hands-on? Well, do you love animals? You could start your own dog walking service. <coughs> In many cities around the country, what was once seen as a mere side gig has been developing into certified businesses for many entrepreneurs. In cities like Charlotte, North Carolina, it's not uncommon to discover nearly half a dozen or more professional dog walking services. Again, you could work from home, where all you would need is a computer to keep track of your appointments, to communicate with clients, and to keep tabs on your business expenses. You may need to cover the cost of a few pet products up front, but those costs will pale in comparison to the startup costs of a traditional business. The best part is, you can make your own home your base of operations. All you would need to do is book the appointments with your clients online and arrive at their home, or at an agreed-upon public space, ready to walk and care for their dog while the pet's owner is at work. Keep in mind, these are only a few examples. In truth, these days, with some obvious exceptions, of course, most small businesses can be run from home and or online. You can be an accountant, an attorney with your own practice, a hairdresser. You can run your very own call center. You can be a counselor, providing sessions via Skype or FaceTime. But a word of caution. While it might be tempting to stand in the middle of your current office and shout at the top of your lungs, I quit, while marching bands accompany you and confetti falls from above... <laughs>
you may want to put such an overt display on hold. In fact, many experts advise would-be business owners to keep their day job at least until their business is fully up and running. If you are looking to start a business and are currently unemployed, then it's recommended you have at least six months to a year's worth of savings in the bank to help keep you afloat while your dream to be your own boss slowly becomes a reality. Let's take a quick break, and when we return, we'll continue with the five things you need to know when starting your own small business. I am Fiscally Fabulous. Transform your business from the inside out with Dr. Teresa R. Martin. The Fiscally Fabulous community and coaching programs are a real game changer, and not just because it produces radical results fast. We're community-focused, results-focused, and fun. We're dedicated to helping entrepreneurs like you obtain business credit, loans, and credit lines to start and grow whether you're a new startup business, existing business, or have good or bad personal credit. Start today by signing up with the Build Her community. Spark the beginning of major change for your business and your life. Visit buildher.enjoyyourlegacy.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about the five things you need to know when starting your own small business. Two, it's easy to test your marketing and advertising efforts. Any business, whether online or in the real world, needs to research the market thoroughly. Obviously, simply having a business is not enough, at least not if you want to be successful and make a profit. You might be the owner of an incredible business, but no one outside of your family and friends will know about it unless you market and advertise it. And you need certain methods and procedures in place in order to test whether your marketing efforts are indeed paying off or, better yet, are ultimately paying you. The problem here is that for traditional businesses, this can get costly. Often, it involves having to hire a team to strategize, implement, and gauge the success of your marketing campaign. If you're running a traditional business where you operate from a fixed, designated location other than your home, you may need to rely at least somewhat on print media for your marketing and advertising needs, another expense that can cut into your budget. In the real world, it is sometimes difficult and expensive to run, track, and tweak advertising and marketing campaigns. This is not the case when doing business online. There is plenty of free and low-cost software that effortlessly tracks your advertising campaigns for you. In fact, a quick search online and you can find professional marketing software that can help you keep track of your advertising campaigns for as low as $25 a month. $54 per year, $32 per year, or for email marketing campaigns, even as low as just six, yes, six dollars. This is dependent on your business's needs, of course, but quite literally at your fingertips, you can find professional software at affordable rates that can act as a virtual marketing team. Using tools available to you online, you can accomplish the job you would normally need to hire and pay as many as one to three employees to do. In doing so, you can save your business hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars in the process. But wait a second. What happens when you discover you need to head in another direction with your advertising? Well, the answer is 3. You can change your online small business quickly. Don't like the return from a particular marketing campaign? You can change your approach in a snap. Do you think perhaps your business logo is shabby looking? You can have a new one up and across all your business online platforms in just a couple of days. One of the great benefits of running a small business online is speed of change. No matter what your intent, making changes to your business online is swift, even on a shoestring budget. 
Many of these changes that take a matter of days, and in some cases, even just a few hours to make in the online world, could take weeks in the real world to accomplish. And when money is tight, you may not have the luxury of waiting that long to overhaul your logo or craft and implement a new marketing strategy. Let's say you made an honest attempt at starting your own handcrafted jewelry business online. You put together a sizable inventory to get you started. You've built a website and advertised your products across several social media platforms. Initial responses were largely positive. Sales were good. But after only a few months, that honeymoon phase of being a new business began to wear off. Your sales started to slump. Traffic to your site and other channels slows to a crawl. Retooling your marketing efforts doesn't seem to have enough of an effect to put the business back on track. After months of declining sales, it becomes clear that handcrafted jewelry might not be the business for you. At least not in the current market. Despite this, you are determined to open and run a successful small business. This might sound like bad news, the end of the road even. If this had been a real-world business, with all the debt looming over you that you'd have had to contend with, it might be. But the good news is, since this was an online business, in a matter of days, you can have your content taken down from all corners of the web, while you plan the direction and implementation of your new business. Perhaps during the transition, you became an active writer and are now aiming to turn this talent into a profitable venture. When you're ready to launch, you can create a new site with new content that can be reached across the web, again, in a matter of mere days and at a fraction of the cost. If there's one thing running an online business is good at accommodating, it's the need for change. Four, your current skill set does and does not matter. Do you have experience running a brick and mortar business? If you do, that's great. The same skills you need to run a real world company translate perfectly to the online world. More importantly, you can start and grow a successful online operation even if you have never run a business before. If you don't have a particular skill set or business ability, there are free and low cost programs, applications, freelancers, and virtual assistants available to meet every one of your business needs. Free and low-cost courses in business development, marketing, digital media, and more are widely available online through a number of different sites. These courses can help you advance your knowledge and skills in certain areas while you use your already existing talents to move your business forward. And don't forget, no one person is an island. That's why it's important that you connect with other entrepreneurs so you can share with and learn from each other. Hire freelancers to handle the tasks that you're unfamiliar with. Most of us cannot do something as complex as starting a business on our own. It takes a team. So don't let your lack of knowledge or skills in one or more areas of running a business deter you from pursuing that dream of being your own boss. Five, it's simple to scale up. When you discover what is working for your small business, you can ramp things up very quickly and inexpensively. In a real-world situation, you may have to build or rent new offices or rent real estate in other facilities. That is expensive and takes time. On the web, scaling up is quick, easy, and possible even on a very low budget. For instance, you could build a sales funnel by creating a lead magnet that promotes a product or service you're offering. You can promote this magnet on your website using SEO optimization to help rank it in the search results. You can also set up an automated email sequence that will go out to anyone who signs up for your lead magnet. And you can do all of this at largely no cost. It's a rather simple, effective means to scale your business in the online world. In a real-world business setting, odds are that increasing your company's media exposure requires connections with major networks and lots of cash on hand to afford such a campaign push. Online, though, it's a different story. 
With social media firmly in the foreground of much of today's work and personal interactions, you can effectively scale your business by expanding your reach with regularly posted content that seeks to engage the audience. You can essentially create your own free media exposure to platforms from YouTube to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can even take this further by connecting with social media influencers who, with the right tact and approach, may even be willing to include a nod to your business in their next blog, post, or vlog, doubling or even tripling your audience reach. So there you have it. Five things you need to know for starting your own small business. Remember, it doesn't have to be an overwhelming experience. That's the beauty of starting out online. It allows you to build the business that you've dreamed about for so long at a fraction of the cost. Thank you for listening, everyone. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast or visit us at www.enjoyyourlegacy.com forward slash fiscally fabulous podcast to learn more. On behalf of Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire, I'm Chrissy Bartles reminding you to enjoy your legacy because you are fiscally fabulous. This has been Fiscally Fabulous with Dr. Teresa R. Martin Esquire. If you would like to learn more on how you can build generational wealth and leave a lasting legacy, go to www.enjoyyourlegacy.com and be sure to subscribe. Thank you for listening. Until next time.